Hi guys, welcome back to another video in the series. Today we're going to be talking... Let me move the camera, I think it's a little bit out of focus. There we go. Today we're going to be talking about Maya. Yesterday we talked about uh, some ways to customize Seaverse. I want to talk about how to optimize Maya a little bit. But before that, let me remind you that on uh, the comments right here, there's always going to be a little bit of information about the courses, the premium courses that we offer. So if you want to check them out, if you like the content that we produce, make sure to check those out, see if there's any good promo for you guys, and uh, leave the comments, uh, likes, anything that you want down there on the on the, uh, on the op options, comments, comment box. So uh, have you ever encountered that Maya is working a little bit slow or you're having issues with how it performs? It takes way too long to open and close. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of little techniques and tricks that you can use to optimize the way uh, Maya runs. So let's start with the loading because that's one of the things that I really hate about Maya. And this is uh, the, the reason why this happens is the following. If you go into Windows, Settings and Preferences and Plugin Manager, you're going to see that Maya is loaded with plugins. You can download more plugins if you want to. Uh, and even though plugins are really, really, really good, you don't need them all the time. If you're just going to be modeling or texturing or rendering, you don't need a lot of the things that are here inside of the plugin tab. Now, most of the plugins from the basic Maya software are relatively fast. They load really fast. So I, I usually don't turn off anything. I actually go in here and turn on things that I, uh, sometimes are off, like the Unfold 3D, uh, the type, which is for, for uh, text uh, modeling and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's one of the things. So uh, most of this, I leave I leave them like that. Now down here, I definitely turn off the Bifrost plugin. Bifrost is really, really cool. It's a really powerful tool, but it's really heavy. So if you leave this on, it will take a little bit longer to load. I also turn off the mash option. Uh, right now we have this new USD. I'm thinking about doing a USD video uh, in the coming weeks. It's a, it's a new way to work. It's a little bit more advanced. It's it's aimed a little bit more towards uh, uh, productions or big productions. However, there is some some merit to it for us as uh, indie artists. So if you guys want me to talk a little bit about USD, which is the uni universal scene description, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I turn off uh, any renders, render engines that, that I have, like RenderMan, uh, Rococo Motion Library is off. Uh, the Substance plugin, nowadays I keep it on, but it's uh, it's usually off by default. The Sweep, which is new in Maya 2022, I like to keep it on. And yeah, that's it. So so usually XGen, MASH, Bifrost, just, just turn those guys off and it's going to improve your load times a little bit. It should take about 15 to 20 seconds to load. If it's taking more than two minutes, check this, because anytime you load something, it will definitely uh, take its time to load. Arnold, Arnold is sometimes, uh, as you can see here, I have it loaded because I use it quite a bit, but it, it does take a little bit of extra time, like an extra 10 seconds probably. So, so just keep in mind, that's the first thing. Just get rid of any of the plugins that you're not using and uh, and that should speed up your loading options. Now, the other thing is a viewport 2.0. So viewport 2.0 is the newest, uh, well, it's not new, super new. It's been around for a long while now, but a couple of years ago, you still had the option to go back to like a, like a traditional viewport. Now everything is viewport 2.0 and uh, it has its own performance things, right? So for instance, if we click right here, you're gonna see that there is a limit on how much resolution you can have for your textures. So if you were to display all the textures at the same time on the scene, there is gonna be a limit and that limit is gonna depend on your graphics cards. For instance, right here, I have all the way to, I believe 16, uh, 16 gigs probably of, of video resolution for, for my um, things and, and that's it. GPU instancing, it, it works sometimes, it helps with the performance. However, uh, I've had some issues with it in the past, so that's why I, I normally keep it off. But just just keep in mind, there's a lot of things here that you can change, enable and disable to, to get the other, other effects. Now, on the options here on the preference, there's, there's actually one that's really, really important. If you go all the way to settings, no, it's not settings. Do, 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 do. <sighs> here, display. On the display options, you're going to go down here to where it says rendering engine. And as you can see right now, I've set this up to DirectX 11. By default, I believe this is set to OpenGL Legacy or OpenGL Core Profile in uh, one of these two guys. And again, if you have a dedicated graphics card, it can be an NVIDIA or an or a MD, that's fine. Uh, DirectX 11 will give you better performance. So I usually keep this uh, with DirectX 11. There's this new thing called the cachette playback, this one right here. And the cachette playback allows you to, when you're doing animation especially, it, it saves a preview of the animation so that you can just play it back and, and see it nicely. However, let me see if I can find a scene here to show you why this could be a problem. Um, I'm gonna use one of the, I'm gonna use one of the exercises from, 
from our live from our animation course which i think it's already up there so hopefully i'm not spoiling anything so let's do like the let's do the baseball i, I really like the baseball So if I were to turn on the baseball uh, animation, which is one of the exercises that we do inside of the of the animation thing, and I and I play this, you're gonna see that yeah, it's playing nicely. We do have our 24 frames per second, so we're seeing it real time, which is good. But if I start adding on things like anti-aliasing, motion blur, shadows, if I turn on the lights, for instance, and I uh, yeah turn on like the shadows as well, if I try to play this it won't run at the same speed that we would like. It's running at nine frames per second, which it still allows us to see the animation nicely, but it's not doing what I want. So here's where the, the um, what's the word? The cachette playback works really well because what cachette playback will do is it will start caching. It will save the, the preview of your animation and then it should be giving you a better result. Now here I'm getting a warning though. I am gonna say that I want viewport hardware cache. Let's see if that improves the thing. There we go. So yeah, technically that cache should be saving. I'm not sure why it's not sh saving. Let me check here, cache playback. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's do a hybrid cache here. Let's hit save. to continuous loop so that it keeps looping not really sure where we're getting that warning though it should be caching there we go should play back now let's let's flush the cache Put it here okay let me check real quick okay yeah so it took me a little while to figure out what it was uh, the warning was not showing here on the on the um, uh, script editor sometimes it tells you what node is not compatible it's the motion blur so i'm just going to turn off the motion blur right here and you can see now the thing becomes blue and if i were to play this thing it runs way smoother so i can see the shadows i can see the light i can see everything and and we're playing everything pretty much at real time because it's caching this information so cachette playback really really good the only thing i don't like about cachette playback is when you're animating sometimes the curves of the animation will uh just like separate from your character and you'll get some very weird stuff so what i do is whenever i'm animating i just disable it and whenever i'm previewing i enable it back again so make sure to change i definitely suggest you go here into the viewport hardware cache so that it's doing this with your with your hardware so with your computer and you should get a little bit of a better effect for instance if i try here the evaluation cache um it gives me the same result. I mean, it was working, but I think uh, hard hardware cache works better for here. So whenever you're working again in animation, this is a very good way to preview your animations without having to play blast and seeing them in real time. Other than that, guys, uh, let's go back to like a clean scene. Other than that, another thing that you should always, always, always keep in consideration is the history of your objects. Remember, every single time you are doing extrusions or bevels or whatever sort of uh, modification you're doing, your objects will get information here see all of this so you need to clean the history delete history right here so that maya is running a little bit uh, more in a lighter way because it doesn't need to remember all those information another very common problem that i see students have is the following when you're working with multiple objects a very common mistake that people make is they'll have multiple objects and then they'll combine them and then they will split them so mesh separate and then they'll combine them again and then they'll split them because they, they're just modeling and trying to get whatever they're trying to do. Uh, but as you can see, every single time I do this, I'm getting some extra information here that's making, uh, it's filling the scene with, with nonsense, right? So what you definitely need to do is, of course, we're gonna delete history and everything's gonna be deleted here. But sometimes, sometimes there are some extra nodes that get uh, stuck inside of the Maya interface, not in the Maya interface, but down in the Maya code. So you wanna go into file and you're gonna see optimize scene size. What the optimized CD size will do is it will try to erase, and you can see here on the script editor, it will try to erase um, all the things that are not uh, used right now. So any empty groups, any empty, empty transforms, any anything that are, we're not using at this uh, precise moment, that's gonna be really helpful. In the hypershade, we have something very similar as well. In the hypershade, you're gonna go here into view, 
and uh, sorry, uh, edit and delete your unused nodes. Sometimes when you're connecting and disconnecting things from the hypershade, it gets very cluttered as well. And this will make sure that if there's a material or a texture that's not being used in your scene, that maybe you used to test something and then you forgot about it, it will delete it and make it lighter. As you can see, I personally use this option right here. Instead of the, of the shaders here, I use this one. Uh, just because rendering these little swatches also takes up a little bit of memory. So to save that little bit of memory, I like using this just text. Since every time I do my materials, I name them properly. Uh, this works fine for me. This one right here, the material viewer, which is also another part of Maya. I strongly recommend you close it unless you're going to be doing some like live uh, shading and adjustments and stuff. Uh, it's just more memory that your computer is using. Right now, hardware is not that bad, but if I were to change this to Arnold, this is pretty much rendering. It's, it's like if I was rendering in real time. So every single time I change the color, it's going to reapply the thing here, which again, it is useful when you're doing some quick, uh, quick switches and stuff, but it is taking memory. It is rendering. So uh, I strongly recommend about or checking it off. If you ever want to bring it back again, just Windows and here's the, the material viewer. So yeah, I prefer just to do the render test directly without the need to, to go in here. Uh, there's one more thing. So we changed these. Um, we already changed the uh, the settings here, right? The display to DirectX 11. In the animation tab, there's this evaluation mode. Uh, so we have DG, Serial, and Parallel. I personally use Parallel, which, which will try to like utilize both resources. Uh, sometimes, sometimes the type of evaluation you use might conflict with the type of project you're doing. I've encountered this with, um, uh, what's the thing, special effects like uh, particles and dynamics. So just keep in mind that the evaluation mode is also going to be part of the performance for Maya. And that's it. Of course, having a strong rig, a strong computer will be uh, good for you, but that's that's usually what we do to, to optimize Maya. Every time a new artist com comes into the studio, I always teach him these tools because I hate being uh, cold and say, hey, my computer is really slow. It's like, hey, to change all the settings in Maya, are you working with few programs open? Just the basics. So keep your Maya scene clean, keep your Maya project clean, and, and you're going to be good. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like it, leave your comments down here. Next week, we're going to do another project. So keep keep uh, keep yourself uh, posted here with uh, all the info and all the, all the uploads because we're probably going to continue with the, with the Seifel Hammond that we left, uh, was it last week or the week before that? And uh, yeah, also, if there's any specific topics you want me to cover, make sure to leave them on the, on the comments and I'll be happy to help. So leave us a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.